So, hi everyone. Um, I've been wanting to do a video for a while now because um, something that I talk about on my Instagram, what my Instagram is here. So check it out if you don't already. Um, I talk not a lot, but a little bit about um, mental health um, and the journey I've had um, and kind of some of the problems I face, how I deal with them, and some of the things that happen to me, some of the feelings that get to me. Um, I don't like to make my Instagram solely about that because it's about fun and laughter and happiness, but um, my mental health is quite a large part of my life. Um, it's something that I've been living with and I think the reason why I wanted to do this video is because when I first started talking about it, everyone was like, whoa, I didn't expect you to say that because I come across so, I suppose, confident and kind of, I suppose, the life and soul, without sounding cheesy, of the party. Um, a lot of my mates were surprised when I started talking about it because they just had no idea. Um, it's saying that I kind of kept within for a long time and eventually it just had to come out. I'll tell you a little bit about the journey I've had. So I've got anxiety, um, I suffer with depression and I also have body dysmorphia. Um, so I'm guessing everyone knows what that is. But um, it started off, I think it started off when I was young because I remember um, being at school and I remember constantly worrying that my dad was going to die at work and I don't know why he was a window cleaner so he had a I suppose a, a reasonably dangerous job but um, not particularly um, and I remember just constantly worrying about it and worrying about it and I also remember worrying about dying a lot when I was at school um, it was like my biggest fear and it, it I suppose it still is quite a f it's something I do fear um, but let's not get too dark. One thing that strikes me as um, probably the most important thing I'm going to say is you know, I do suffer from suicidal faults and tendencies. That was probably one of the hardest things that I had to admit and I had to tell Charlotte and it kind of started off as like I used to almost uh, fantasise about killing myself if something wasn't going very well so if you know work weren't going very well and we had an argument or we had money problems or whatever it is I would just think well I'll just jump in front of a train on the way home because I've got that bail out if it all goes wrong um, and it kind of they were my first suicidal thoughts um, and they were pretty regular but they never went any further than that, but it was just weird to be having them. Um, and then it's something that just kind of crops up into my head um, sometimes. And bizarrely, sometimes it can be when I'm in a really good place, we might be out for the day having a really nice time. And it just comes in my head, and I don't know why. Um, I've actually got a fear of death. Um, I don't really want to die. I'd like to think that I'd never take it any further than that, and I've got no reason to, but I think it's important that we talk about it because a lot of people have these thoughts and they fester, and then one day they're found, you know, hanging from a tree or um, in front of the train. And I know that is quite well, but I suppose that's the problem people don't open up and talk about these things um, and I suppose everything kind of snowballs and as I got older I got anxious about my own I, I used to drink a lot when I was younger from when I was about 15 to I was about 25 I binge drunk a lot like a hell of a lot blackouts everything don't really know why I didn't have a particularly bad childhood like you know came from a loving family and obviously we had our problems like everyone does but um, I don't know really 
I was very fat, I was very overweight. I was like 20 stone when I was about 17, 18, and I, I kind of used to hate it, like hate it so much. Um, even though it was my own fault, hold my hands up. Obviously ate too much, drunk too much, didn't do any exercise. Um, let myself get um, in a bit of a state. Um, then I lost the weight, well, most of it. Um, and I thought my problems would end there from the, in terms of the weight. Um, I had gastric surgery, um, not a gastric band. I had a tummy tuck liposuction to try and lose the excess skin because that was still bothering me. And I thought that would be the end of it, but it weren't, to be honest. And I still get every day, the first thing I wake up and think about is my weight. The last thing at night, um, kind of go through stages like sort of punish myself by doing exercise every day but then I, sometimes I binge eat and you know I'm just in a really crap place with it you know I kind of at the same time I'm in an all right place with it compared to what I have been and if I look in a mirror I think I look fat and I sometimes throw my clothes away because they don't fit properly even though they probably shrunk in the tumble dryer or something um, and you know that's a really dark place to be sometimes which Again, is another reason why I want to talk about it because it's nothing to be ashamed about, um, especially as a man. Um, people think that, you know, the old dad bod and the beer belly and everything else is all a bit of banter, um, which is everyone's favourite word for um, being able to say something terrible to someone without it being deemed hurtful. Um, but, you know, the reality is most people don't want to be like that and you know it's difficult but I suppose that's where my anxiety grew um, from that um, and my anxiety kind of for anyone that's never had anxiety and I mean if you if you suffer from anxiety you might have a different feeling so I'm not saying this is everybody's feeling but the only way I can describe it is imagine losing your two-year-old in a supermarket and not being able to find them and that feeling that you've got in your chest where you feel like you've been stabbed in the heart and you can't breathe because you're so worried that is kind of anxiety at a very high level but my anxiety is is kind of not quite that much but quite some way to being that bad just for no reason all the time like you're worried about something like you've done something wrong and it's crap to be honest it never goes away. Um, I'm on tablets, I'm on Escalopram, which helps massively. Um, I got offered tablets a long time ago, but I didn't want to take them um, because I thought I'd be addicted to them and never get off them, which maybe I am. But I've been on them about a year, it might be two years, I don't know. Life's a bit, who knows how long things have, like I don't even know what that is. Um, they, they definitely help. Um, I think my depression is kind of, something that goes kind of hand in hand with my anxiety. Um, you know, the dark clouds form for no reason sometimes. Um, like I said earlier, we could be having a family picnic and the kids are having a whirl of a time and all of a sudden, you know, there's a cloud and I just go into a bit of a dark place. And the first step to kind of being in a better place was to open up about it, talk about it, tell, I told Charlotte, I think someone at work, like my boss, I think I, I think I started losing my rag at nothing and kind of just being really down and he just told me to go and speak to someone um, as a concerned um, boss. And then I did and I eventually went on the tablets and I had a bit of, I have some therapy and stuff. I've done hypnotherapy to get rid of the anxiety. That worked really well for me. Um, got to the root of it and stripped a lot of it out. In terms of like the depression, I think the tablets keep me reasonably upbeat. Um, the hardest question that I get asked is, how is your mental health? Because I talk about it. Like I've noticed my family, and like bless them, because they're trying, they kind of just go, well, how's your mental health? And it's like, uh kind of a bit like you know asking how's your physical health um it's just you don't really know what to say 
Um, and I know a lot of people find it difficult to have that conversation, but I massively respect them for trying and caring and trying to make it less of a taboo. So that's not in any way um, saying it's a negative thing, but it's just funny because I don't really know what to say. And then they change the subject before I've even answered normally because they're just like, I don't know what you, I don't want you to say anything. But yeah, I mean, it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing battle for me. It's an ongoing journey. Um, I don't think I'll ever be cured. Um, but I think I'm managing the situation as best I can. Um, I've got a wonderful wife um, in Charlotte that supports me. She understands like there's certain things like I have to do my exercise every day and obviously with five kids and all the other things we have going on, sometimes me going out for a two hour bike ride isn't ideal. Kids are amazing. I obviously don't talk to them about it. Um, they're too young, um, but I want them to be open as we get old, as they get older, and you know, even little things like how you feeling, why you feeling like that. Um, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. I want them to talk to me. I want them to come to me if they're having these thoughts. How could you say these things? Your kids are going to listen to it, and you know, I think that they will have massive amounts of respect for me for talking about this. I'm doing this because it makes me feel better, and I'm cool about talking about it because um, I know that it'll help people and and likewise if you're having feelings faults or anything um reach out to someone talk to someone um and go and see a gp whatever it is and just start on that journey of getting help because if i hadn't done that i don't know whether i'd be sitting here now i do take responsibility for it you know i'm not going to let it beat me um I, I understand that some people are in it so deeply and is so difficult for them that they can't have that bounce back. But I personally don't want it to beat me. I don't want it to consume me. I don't want to talk about it all day, but I'm going to win. And I am going to kick my mental health problem into touch, not, ev not forever, but temporarily and crack on my life. And the only reason I did that was because I spoke up, reached out, and acknowledged it so anyway check out my instagram um you know if anyone wants to chat you can always reach out to me take it easy